morning. It's a privilege to share with you blessings from God's Word in today's uh, morning devotionals. Let us be opening our Bibles and meditate on a passage from Genesis chapter 29 verses 30 to 35. It reads, And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served him yet seven other years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord had looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. And she conceived again and bare a son, and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me the son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son, and said, Now this time my husband will join unto me, because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. In verse 35 it says, And she conceived again and bare a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord, therefore she called his name Judah, and left bearing. Let us pray, Father, uh, bless our time together as we meditate on your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is a story between Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. The contextual story behind this passage is that Jacob at this time was in danger of being retaliated upon by his brother Esau because Jacob supplanted Esau in securing their father's birthright blessings. Rebecca, Esau, and Jacob's mother suggested to Isaac that Jacob be sent to Padan Aram to find himself a wife among his mother's kin. And so, Jacob was sent off by Isaac for this purpose. He met Rachel first, his Uncle Laban's, his Uncle Laban's daughter, and loved her. Laban and Jacob agreed to give Rachel to be Jacob's wife for seven years of servitude. Seven. After seven years has passed, in which seemed like unto Jacob, but a few days, there is no question Jacob really loved Rachel. The marriage was set only for Jacob to find out in the following morning of the wedding day that it was Leah whom Laban gave to Jacob as his wife. This is quite a shock to Jacob. However, Jacob asserted his desire to marry Rachel and agreed to render another seven years of service for Rachel's hand. Seven days after the marriage to Leah, Jacob wedded Rachel. Leah had Silpha as her handmaid and Rachel had Bilhah. I read the story. I am inspired on how love conquers obstacles between two lovers, between Jacob and Rachel. But then, what happens now to Leah?
I made a title on this devotional, God's Imprint in the Life of a Scorned Wife. Let's go back a few verses before, verses 16 to 17. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. It is apparent that when it comes to as is where is condition, Leah was really the underdog. She was also on the downside end of Laban's trickery of having Jacob rendered service for 14 years. And Leah basically cannot hope for a turnaround wherein Jacob will someday fit her with Cinderella shoes and they slowly disappear into the horizon, walking together and living happily ever after. Uh, this is real life. In verse 18, it says, And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years. And in verse 30, it again says, And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah. Definitely, it was Rachel whom Jacob shows affection. An English playwright, William Congreve, wrote, it is very famous, Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Beware, men. The quote is saying that no one is angrier than a woman who has been rejected in love. It is not written in the passage, but I can just imagine how Leah must have been feeling spending seven days of her honeymoon with her husband, knowing that her husband has agreed to render another seven years of service to earn the hand of the lady who truly owns her husband's heart. It's so sad. The Bible is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. In our passage, let us meditate in verse 30. I mean verse 31. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. We are then presented with four successive testimonies of God's blessings to Leah as expressed in her son's names. In verse 32, Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord had looked upon my affliction. Verse 33 says, Because the Lord hath heard I was hated, and he's called, he called his name Simeon. She called his name Simeon. In verse 34, my husband, my husband will be joined unto me. Therefore was his name called Levi. In verse 35, now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. Our chapter 29 is until verse 35 only. 
Many events happened thereafter wherein God continued to work in the life of Jacob and his family. Leah went on to bear Jacob's two more sons and a daughter, Issachar, Sibulon, and Dinah. Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, bare two of Jacob's sons, Dan and Naphtali. Silpa, Leah's handmaid, bare two of Jacob's sons, Gad and Asher. And Rachel, she was remembered, she bare two of Jacob's sons, Joseph and Benjamin. We learned that Rachel died in, during the birth of Benjamin. Of the twelve sons of Jacob, six were born of Leah. Jacob's progeny of what is now the Lord's chosen people, the nation of Israel. The Lord gives as he pleases. We are God's children when we repented of our sins and embraced Christ's redemptive work on the cross. Meditating on this passage from the Holy Scriptures, let us be encouraged by these learnings. One, God sees all. All. He sees our circumstances, predicaments, longings, and insecurities. Not only is he looking at the loving, lovable personalities like Rachel's, the people in authority like the lab, Laban's, the main characters, the Jacobs, he is also looking after the welfare of the unloved and the disadvantaged, the Leahs. God's grace is beyond measure. It is more than enough for everyone, for all ages. Praise God. Second, God is very patient in teaching us applicable life lessons. In the case of Leah, when she bore Reuben, Simeon, and Levi, three times Leah thought that her bearing children will put her in a better standing with her husband. However, we cannot see Jacob responding in that manner, reading the scriptures. Three times Leah missed the object lesson God was conveying. Uh, most teachings or training venues usually only give two chances before disciplines are put into effect. In an employer-employee relationship for employees, training is done and post-training is done afterwards. No significant improvement in performance of the employee after training puts the employee in a precarious position. But a retraining is being put into the table for the employee to pick up the slack or else. For the employee to show no Further significant change after retraining is a sure way of losing on opportunities and or being sanctioned with disciplinary actions. This is acceptable for us. This is fair. For Leah, it took for her to have her fourth child to finally get it, for her to eventually ascribe praise to God, naming her son Judah, meaning praise the Lord. God's daily serving of grace and mercy has kept all of us alive. I mean, because of His great mercy, we are not consumed, and He is long-suffering in teaching us on our issues with anger, jealousy, pride, lust, 
and disobedience. Leia got it in four object lessons. Sadly, some of us don't quite get it yet. If we do not yet surrender our sin issues to God, and we are still alive, I say, God is in the process of teaching us patiently. We should be grateful for that. Let us be thankful. We can wake up each morning experiencing God's working in our lives. The Lord does His word into our hearts. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this time. May your name be praised. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.